Hey guys, this is Mar and I'm here to show you how I did my Spirited Away inspired cereal box in Blender 2.83. There's usually a lot of trial and error in my process, but I'm only gonna show you what worked for me. If I missed something or you have any questions, just leave me a comment down below. So let's jump right on it. The first thing I'm gonna do is hit 1 and then 5 on the numpad to enter the front orthographic view. Then I'm gonna press and hold tab to enter edit mode. I press this icon up here for alt Z so I can see through the cube and I'm gonna press up here and enter the view per shading menu and crank the x-ray value all the way up to adjust the cube's transparency. Now I select top vertices and scale the cube up by hitting G for grab and then hit instead to move the vertices up only on the Z axis. You can also do this by pressing this move button up here. Now I press 3 on the numpad to enter the right side view, hold shift and drag to select the lower vertices. And I'm gonna scale the cube in by pressing S for scale and then Y to constrain it to the Y axis. If you're not into shortcuts, you can press here on the scale button and drag in like this. To open the box that's lit up, I first enter the edge select mode by hitting 2 on the normal part of the keyboard that's not the numpad or from up here. I select this edge with left click, stand on top of the box and hit V to rip that edge off a little bit by pulling up like this. Then I go to the right view and open the full lid. I do this in two steps because for some reason if I do it straight on the right view it always rips off the wrong edge. Now I'm gonna do some cuts on the lid. So while hovering on top of the cube, I'm gonna press Ctrl R to create some loops, click on the cube and when these two arrows appear I press the S key to center the loop. And on the loop cut and slide box on the bottom left here, I'm gonna put two numbers of cuts. Then I create another loop with Ctrl R on the top lid up here. Select the middle edge and rip it off with V and then hit S to leave it in its place. And then I scale it in on the X axis by hitting S and X. Now I select this edges here. Press E for extrude, S for scale and X to scale the edges in just a little bit and then E again, extrude down and scale in. What I do now is soften the box up with the subsurface modifier. This modifier will make my mesh, which is low poly, look as if it was high poly but I can keep working with my low poly mesh, which is way easier than moving thousands of polygons around. So I press on the wrench icon here, add modifier, subdivision surface. Then make the render and viewport have two subdivision levels. Now I need to add some tension to the mesh so it doesn't look like this melting blob mess by adding more loops with Ctrl R on the top, bottom, sides, and also on the lid here, here, and here. And now I need to smooth out the transition between the faces, so I select everything with A, go to face, and shade smooth. Then I want to add a texture on it, so I need to unfold the box flat and map it on top. I want to have the front and right side as one unfolded piece, then back and left side as another piece, and then the bottom and top as two separated pieces. And I need to mark some seams on the box so Blender knows where to cut the pieces. So first I unselect everything by hitting A twice. I select this edge with double click. Turn it 
turn to this side and shift and double click to select these other edges. Hit Ctrl E and mark seam to separate front and back. Now I hold shift and start double clicking to select these edges on the bottom. Then Ctrl E, mark seam and finally hold shift again and double click to select the edges on the top. Hit Ctrl E and mark seam to separate the lid. Now I need to open a window to edit my pieces, which from now on I'm going to be calling UVs. So I'm going to go to this timeline window that's down here by default. I stand exactly on top of the division line. I'm going to click and drag it up. And I change the editor type to UV editor. With the mouse on the 3D viewport, I hit A to select the whole mesh and then hit U and click Unwrap. To test my UVs, I'm gonna create a test material. So first, I open a default texture by pressing U right here, and on generated type, I choose color red. And now I need to load this test texture in the material. So I go to the materials tab here, I go into surface, base color, click on this thing, select image texture, press this icon here and select the color grid texture that I just created. Now to see how it looks like on the model, I hover over the 3D viewport, press Z to bring up the shading menu and click on material preview. I could leave the UVs as they are, but I would like to have them straight. So on the UV editor window, I hover with my mouse just anywhere, select everything with A, hit R, 90 and enter to confirm. And then G to move it and S to scale it in and make it fit the texture area. I want the inside of the box to have a different material to resemble cardboard. And because the mesh by default has the same texture on both sides, I need to create a second set of UVs so I can map a second texture on the inside. For this, I go to the Object Data Properties down here, then UV Maps, rename the one I already have to Outside, then hit the plus button to duplicate the UVs and rename this new one to Inside. Now I scale this bit down and map it somewhere where I can assign the brown color on my texture later. Let's say around here. I'm gonna save the UVs as a transparent image so I can bring it in Photoshop and have them as a guide to make my actual texture. So I click on the outside UVs, go to the UV menu here, export UV layout. Here I'm gonna change the fill opacity to zero so the UV filling is actually transparent and I'm gonna change the size to 3000 by 3000 which is pretty big just in case I want to print my final image later. Now I click on the inside UV map and do the same. I open my UV layouts in Photoshop and now I will paint the texture on top. And you really don't want to see me doing this, so I'm gonna time travel a bit and here we go. I added this brown square right here so I can map the inside of the texture on top of it. Now I hide the UV layout and save the PSD. Then I go back to Blender, go to Object Mode, and delete the current material because I'm gonna be making a new material that will have the texture I just created in Photoshop and combine the outside and inside to get the box all mapped and ready. So I click on New, switch to Shader Editor here, press Shift A, Texture, Image Texture and I'm gonna place it here. Now I click open, find my PSD, set the texture interpolation to closest so the image looks sharper, and then plug color to base color. Now 
Now I'm going to press Shift A and put an attribute. So I can tell my shader to use the outside UVs on this part. And here on name, I write the exact name of the UV group I made before, which was outside, and then plug vector to vector. Now for the inside, I'm going to select and duplicate the skies with Shift D. and change the name of the attribute node to inside. Now I'm gonna mix them together, so I press Shift A, Shader, Mix Shader. I plug the outside to the top, the inside to the bottom, and then I'm gonna hit Shift A, Input geometry and plug back facing to the mix shader factor that will tell Blender each side of the polygons I unwrapped will have a different texture. Now I connect it to the surface on the material output node and that's it for the box. Now I'm going to create the star candies by pressing shift A, mesh and Q. Hit tab to enter edit mode, control R to add an edge loop here, left click on the cube and S key to center the loop. Now I click here or press 1 to switch to vertex leg mode. Now I delete the bottom vertices with X. And I'm going to use a mirror modifier, so anything I do on the top is also going to happen on the bottom. So I go to the modifiers tab, add a mirror modifier, and click only on set to mirror my mesh on the set axis. Select the top vertices and scale them in. I hit A to select all the faces. Click and hold on the extrude button here and choose extrude individual. Now I'm going to move this yellow handle up a little bit. Then I hit the point key on my keyboard to bring the pivot point menu up, select individual origins and scale in just a little bit. I add a subdivision surface modifier with two subdivisions and shade it smooth. I'm going to leave the star here for now. Now I'm going to change the file size by going to the properties editor and then clicking on this printer icon to enter the output properties. And I'm going to change the dimensions so the image is square. Then I'm going to set up the camera, so I go and select it from here on this outliner panel. And once it's selected, it will bring the camera properties button down here. So I go in and change the camera to orthographic. Then here on my 3D view window, I press 0 so I can see through the camera. Or press this camera button here that does the exact same thing. Now I want to move the camera around while focusing on the box. So what I do is first left click on the box and then shift S, cursor to select it, so the 3D cursor snaps to the box. Now I select the camera up here and then back on the 3D view window I hit the dock key to bring up the pivot point menu and select 3D cursor. So now this 3D cursor is the pivot point. And now I just rotate and move the camera around until I get an angle I like. The last thing for the camera settings is to adjust how close I want it from the box. So I go to the camera properties and zoom the camera in by making this orthographic scale number lower. Now I'm going to open a second window so in this one I can see the render preview in real time and then I work side by side on the composition on the second window. For the real-time preview window, I hit set for the shading menu and rendered. And I'm also going to toggle the overlays off so I don't see any selection outlines or lamps. 
I'm gonna stand in this corner up here. Then I'm gonna left click and drag to the left to bring in a new window. And I hit T to head the tool menu on the left. On this new window, I'm gonna get out of the camera mode by pressing zero on the numpad and then turn the overlays back on for this one. And I'm gonna hide the camera so it doesn't annoy me by hitting H. I switch the pivot point back to medium point, grab the star, scale it down, Shift D to duplicate it and arrange a couple of them around like this. Now I go into the materials tab, add material, leave all the default settings and I'm gonna change the color. And then I select the other stars and do exactly the same. And now I apply the colors to the other ones by selecting a star, pressing here, and selecting the material I want from the list. Now it's a good time to rename my objects. For the sparkles, I add a plane, move it away, enter edit mode, rotate it with R and X, then rotate it on the Y axis, and subdivide it with right click, subdivide. Now I scale it up a little bit on the Z axis, select these vertices, and scale them in. I'm gonna press A to select all of the vertices, and scale the whole thing down. Now I'm gonna assign it a new material, so I hold tab, go to object mode, then go to the materials tab and create a new material. And I want this material to emit some light, so I'm changing the surface to emission, and change the strength to two. Then I'm gonna make a hollow sparkle, So first I duplicate the sky with shift D, enter edit mode, and then press I to inset these faces. Move the mouse in, left click to confirm, and I press X to delete these new interfaces. And now I'm gonna add some more of the sparkles around. Then I'm gonna go into the world tab here, and change the color to something like this, so my model gets this pinkish tint. And I'm gonna lower the strength to 0.5. For the background, I'm gonna hit Shift A and add a plane. Then I press 7 to go to the top view, and scale, rotate it, and move it to align it to the camera. And I'm gonna give it a new material. I'm gonna do some more renaming. And now move on to the lights. I first delete the default light. Then I hit Shift A, Light, Sun. The sun is gonna illuminate the same way no matter where I place it, so I'm gonna leave it here. I rotate it 45 degrees on the X axis by hitting R, X, and 45 then minus 50 on the set axis by hitting R, Z, and minus 50. And on the lights properties tab here, I bring the strength up to 5 and turn the contact shadows on. I move the stars away a bit so they don't project unwanted shadows on the box 
and I'm also going to rearrange some of them so they have a better contrast against the box. I will add a point light and move it back so it leads the background with Shift A, Light, Point. And I'm going to change the color and bring the power up to 100. I duplicate the point light, move it here, bring the power down to 80 and change the radius to 1. And finally I'm gonna go into the render settings here on this microwave icon. I make sure my render engine is Eevee, I turn on the ambient occlusion, then bloom, set the color to a pink, set the radius to 3 and the intensity to 1. Then on color management, I set the look to high contrast and the gamma to 0.7. And now all I have to do is go to the render menu up here and click render image. And that's it! Thanks for watching all the way through, and if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.